So there's a job I want to do here and it's a bit peculiar that it happened in the first place but I need to repair it. So this is the gate to the entrance from up to our farm. I have two gates here that close across. And this gate, you would have noticed, always would have been closed. I don't use this particular side, hence the reason it's a bit dirtier there. On the other side, you can see where the pad is, where the normal track is, where I come up with the tractor. But I put a 13-foot post down here. Now, I know a 13-foot post is not normally what you'd put in to hang a gate. You'd be digging to Australia by the time you get that in. The reason why it's 13 foot is there was a massive hole here. Um, and we felt it up and we put the post. We had a 13-foot post here. We just put it the whole way down to the ground. We put loads of steel around it and we put plenty of concrete and blocks and all sorts of stuff around it to hold it in place. But it moved. So I think what's happened is the bank is all starting to move slightly in, which there's a deep drain behind. I'm not surprised it's doing that. So that leaves us that it's tilting quite a bit that direction. And now the gate, you can see the way it wants to swing close, or swing open, I should say. And the main thing about it is it doesn't close anymore. You can see there the latch just about catches and you can see there's quite a bit of a gap there so everything has been thrown off by that post moving its way out so there's a few ways to fix it one of which would be to dig this whole area out and there's not a mission i'm doing that but you'd be at it for a week digging because you'd have to go down to the level of that drain so the easiest way to fix it because there still is sound on the bottom is to just cut the steel post at the very bottom we'll cut a notch in it and we'll try to bend it back. It's attached to the fence and I don't want to take it off the fence if I don't have to. So I brought a heap of stuff over with me. Everything more or less apart from the kitchen sink. But no doubt I'll probably be missing something as soon as I go to start. Yeah. So I just brought over a wee level here. I put new bubbles in it this morning. So we're working perfect now. Just to see how far it is off. But it's off about a three quarters of an inch. When you add that three quarters of an inch to the whole length of this, which is about five and a half foot above the ground, it's quite a bit. So you can see the way I cut it, and now I can pull it back. I don't think it's going to be enough. I'm going to have to widen that cut. But all in all, our plan it's kind of working. Pull this back now and see where our bubble is. We're very close, so we need probably the width of another cut to bring it in line. Now you keep an eye on that bubble. Now, see that? She's actually gone a wee bit over corrected. I have checked it this way as well, which it hasn't moved. It's fine that way. Put a couple of tacks of weld on it just as it sits now. Stick our gate back on and see what we're like. When we check here to make sure we're all right. So before the gates were more or less even, this one was always slightly lower than the other one because of a great fall that there is in this ground. You can see this one sits quite a bit lower there now and the latches don't line up. They used to before. But I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to cut these, I call them lugs, but I'll cut these eyes off here. Weld them right to the very, very top and raise the gate as much as we can. But even doing that, we're not going to get an awful lot out of it. But still, we'll get something. I'm just rooting around here and trying to shimmy stuff up here with a couple of stones and a few blocks just to get the height that I want. Now I have that level sitting there and the bubbles bang on the centre. Alright, so I think we're alright now. I've got a nice weld there, a good weld on the top as well and everything else 
along the beam there is all fine. That's not going to go nowhere. But another thing that's annoying the different out of me now is that my feet are clogged with muck with this old sticky stuff that's here. So I have the bucket here behind me and it's precisely why I brought it over. Well, there's a couple of buckets of old dirt got rid of there now. And when the rain hits that, and trust me, there'll be plenty of rain to hit it, it will wash all the remaining stuff off. Just as when you're driving up and down, it's not sticking to the wheels and you're drawing it up while you're putting in sails for the cattle. So, in case you're wondering where I put the dirt that I took away, well, there's there. I'll put it here beside this drinker, and when the ground dries up, I'll come in with a loader and I'll spread it across around the front of that drinker because it's not all muck. There's a lot of stone in that, as you can see and it'll give a good kind of a bedding around that drinker so waste not want not now it's the following day we're back over here again because there's one other job i need to do this crush head i've often said before in videos and you can see a white piece of cord tied here from the last time i used it when we're loading cattle or even when we're letting cattle out of the crush i have to hold this open because it springs back closed all the time so when i open it like that if i don't hold that open to let the cattle out the spring back all the time now that's okay if you have two people someone can hunt the animals out as you hold it open but most of the time i'm here on my own and that can be a pain in the backside what i have to do normally is put the animal up the crush put this guy up behind the animal and then open it and hold it and try to reach back with my hand tip the animal and she runs out that works sometimes it doesn't always work but another issue is when you're loading the cattle you have to kind of tie it open to a gate i don't know why i put up with it so long because it shouldn't be that hard to fix it. And that's what we're going to do now. So to fix it, there's a few different things. And before we do that, I want to say thank you to a lot of people who messaged me and emailed me, telling me all the different ways that I can solve this problem. I do appreciate all the messages I get. From Gary in Galway, sent me dozens of photos of his, um, to people on YouTube itself, the YouTube community, and a couple of people online that I speak to as well. Patsy, you know who you are. And the other one is not going to say your name, because you asked me to. The person who knows what I'm talking about will be the only person who'll get that one. The ones you'll see new have a ring kind of fitted here with a loop coming out and a little slot. And then the little slot when it's opened will hook in here into a little toot that comes out. And that's all well and good. A bit of manufacturing in that and would do the job lovely. I looked at them, I thought to myself, this little hook sticking out. Well, it's sticking out in a bad place. And if you were working on an animal, well, it can catch you. Another thing mentioned was to make a little hitch frame so that when the gates are opened, a little frame would just sit down on top and hold the gates opened. You could hang it here on the wall whenever you were finished with it, and yeah, that'd work. But another little bit of manufacturing in it, there's probably a half a morning's work making that. And I was just looking at myself and I think I have an easier solution that'll work just equally as well. So you have a sleeve here that's mounted onto this that rotates, and it's the same on the far side. And when you hold this one open, it keeps the one on the far side open because the whole mechanism is joined together underneath. If this one was held open correctly, then it would hold that one open as well. And there's an easy way of doing that. There's a grease nipple here on the far side, so it won't interfere with that. But if I come along just above that grease nipple, somewhere here, and just drill a hole. Keep it open now is the main thing. Right, so I'm going to clean you off there. It's bucketing it down now, but I'm refusing to stop. We'll keep at it. So when I open that up, and it's fully open, there's a hole in line. So now I need to get something to go through that hole.
almost, not just quite. We just have to run the drill through it a few times just to open it up. Right, so we're gonna just stick this guy in here. Ah, that's more like it. Right, so now you get the idea of what I'm talking about. This way now I'm not interfering with the grease nipple. And when I push that in the whole way, like that, it's pointing out this way so it's not gonna get caught in an animal, it's not gonna get caught in my arm or anything. I am gonna cut it off here and leave it that there's very little sticking out. Um, and then I have a chain on it here so I can attach it onto the crush itself so that it's not gonna go wandering away on me. It may not open as wide on this side, but if I wanted to, I could do the very same and put another one here. But I don't see really the need to because that there would let every animal out. Right, so I'm just gonna put this guy in here. Drill the whole force to get it started. Okay, not go the whole way through. Then we get the chain on now. I can tuck it in there, out of the way. Just a simple one, open the gate. Bring that file across. Gates open. It saves me having to manufacture something more complicated to do the very same thing. You know something, it's a small job, but that's gonna make a hell of a difference for me. But you can see the level of algae that's grown on the yard, it's just like a skin. And you break your neck on it. Definitely soon put your ankles up over the top of your head. Anyway, that's that job done. Let's go do something else. Well, this box is not gonna cut it today because it's raining every 15 minutes and it's raining quite heavy all morning. But I need to carry some tools over with me and I don't want them getting wet. They can't be getting wet. I'll put on a different box here. This sits in here somewhere over. These little ratchet straps are very handy. Just tying stuff down on racks of quads and things. They're fairly inexpensive as well, and I do get plenty of uses for them. There, that'll keep that right. I've got two other ones here, and I'm going to have to get another long one. So I might have put two on this one. Which actually, you know something, might actually be handier the whole lot. There you go. Camera gear in here too. Dry. It's very important to keep that stuff dry. Right, that's easy. What's that? I think. All right, well, it's a few days later now from fixing that post. And I'm down here on our back silage field. Um, we upped it, I suppose, from the last time I made a video in this very same spot. Um, has the weather improved or has conditions improved? Well, the simple answer is conditions have changed and they've changed for the worse, unfortunately. Uh, the rain has got way more persistent and way, way heavier. And it seems to really settle into that now. It's raining every day. It's just cleared now, but you can see the sky. How dark it is. Another shower just building as we speak. Our fields, silage fields look horrendous. They're, here's not too bad. For the up, the redder they get and the yellower they get. And another thing I've noticed is the smell. It's got a wet, rotten type of smell to the fields now. It's a serious, serious problem now. So I was up around in Shockland yesterday, in County Mead, Nav and Dunshockland, that area. Seen loads of fields of cows out. Now they're doing a little bit of harm in the ground, but not an awful lot. Certainly not in the way this ground would be if cows went out. And I could see a lot of lanes of fertilizer have been spread as well. So they are seen to be able to get on with things um, for now. Unfortunately for here, this zone is classed as a disadvantage area for the type of land that it is. It does not dry out like that type of land. So this would take about three weeks maybe more, considering how wet it is, of good drying weather to dry out. So getting close to the 1st of April, you can imagine the problems that's facing us. But anyway, I'm gonna use this bit of a clearance now to tackle into this job here. All right, so the first thing I have to do is get this buck on the ground, get him flat on the ground. I'm gonna branch a bit of him here now so he can get in there at the trunk and just chop him off and hopefully he'll fall on the ground then. The root will probably fall back into that drain and then we can start working on it. <laughs>
All right, well, after about two hours work, we have it cleared. There's one yoke hanging across there. Well, it's that high up, it's not gonna cause any issues, but if I had had my pole saw with me, I would have took it with it. But I'll come back here another time. I'll certainly don't wanna make any extra work for me because I have enough in front of me. So a wee pile of sticks there that I'll bring home in the quad trailer in the next couple of days. I did get an ACB spot there just behind where the wire will be um, to throw all the bushes. It wasn't that much, it was just out of AV. Now, when I was over here before, um, we showed these trees that were on the ground. There's a few, good few down at home as well. And people mentioned the ivy. Agent, why don't you cut down the ivy around the trees? It's that's pulling them down. I don't disagree that. It's exactly what's pulling it down. But the issue is, is that everything is covered in ivy. Like everything. The complete hedges from top to bottom is covered in it. Say a hedge like that there, even on its own. That could take several days. Several hard days work to go around every individual thing and take it off it. And the problem with that even is, by the time you go around the farm and done several weeks water work, you'd nearly want to start again because it comes up that quickly up the trees again. It's just this part of the country, and I see a lot of Ireland is destroyed by ivy. And it's not the ivy that kills the tree, it's the extra weight that pulls the tree down. And I get that, I fully understand that. And I'd love to be able to go around every tree, and I do do a lot of them, and I've showed that before on the channel. I do a lot of the trees that stand kind of alone and are easy to access, but it's just impossible for me to go around and do all. Now, another thing that's a wee bit sad is the state of this fence. Um, now, yes, a tree will pull the fence down, that's not a bother, I don't mind that. But it's the fact that the way these all decided to lay down, the whole way up along here, and I put this fence in about six years ago. I remember chainsawing the whole thing back, facing it all back. I was super proud when it was all done. It looked real well and there's a nice sense of achievement when you get a field stock proof. And I spent years going around my farm trying to stock proof as much of it as I could. Whether it's a boundary hedge or a hedge between my own fields, it made no difference. It just gave me that sense of security. I didn't have to worry about cattle breaking out or cattle coming in. And to me, it was worth spending a lot of money doing that job. But unfortunately, to see how the posts are all just like paper now. Like, it's the wire that's holding up a lot of them. Posts were a complete waste of time, them green posts. And now we're going back, unfortunately, to the same kind of thing again. We did have Cretasol posts, but Cretasol has been banned now in Ireland. We're not fit to use that now to treat posts. But anyway, it's going to have to be sorted. We'll have to come back in a wee while and sort that. Uh, this is a hollow here. And it's quite a steep, awkward hollow in a silage field. But it's a big owl part and something I would love to do with it sometime would be to strip that entire hill off and then bulldoze that whole crown of that hill down in here and raise this up a bit, six, seven foot. It'd be a serious job, it'd make a great job of this field. Very costly, have to weigh up whether it's worth doing it or not. I think it would if weather doesn't stay like the way it is long term. And funny enough, you wouldn't be that long doing it when it'd be stripped off. But anyway, that's for another day. Let's go do something else.